name's Kathy McAnally and I'm coming to you from Bixby, Oklahoma. I have an Etsy shop called R&R Woven Treasures. I'd like to talk to you today about one of the weave structures that we use in hand weaving. It's called waffle weave and I think if you look closely you can see why it's called waffle weave. See the squares? You can see the squares are created by ridges and indentions and ridges and indentions, both horizontally and vertically. So we have a square, and these squares uh, give us some texture to the cloth. In fact, it has quite a bit of texture uh, to it. You can also see here, this is plain weave, and you can see it has absolutely no texture. It is flat, and we use this for the hem. This is one washcloth, and this will be another one when I'm finished. So I'll cut this apart in the middle, and then hem it and make two washcloths. In fact, you can see that I have a lot of washcloths on this roll here. I make these washcloths in this weave structure because it is thick and gives a lot of absorbency uh, when you're trying to wipe up a mess. It is made of full of 100% uh, cotton, and so that cotton thread just soaks up the mess. Uh, the weave structure is created by threading each of these heddles in a different order. And uh, this order is called a point twill order. You start with the first one in shaft one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So the first eight threads are going to be in the straight twill threading. And then to make it point twill, you come back down, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Then you start the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you keep on going so that you have these V's that are inverted, these, these point twill is what it's called. Uh, the floats and the waffling is then created by, when I press on a pedal, you can see only some of the threads are raised. That means that that the uh, blue thread that I'm throwing across here will be shown mostly on the top. As I then go down the row, you can see in this structure that it changes. Now you can see I've got more white threads on top. And as I go all the way down here to the very bottom, you can see I've got a whole lot of white threads now on top. That means that the blue thread is going to be shown mostly on the bottom. This is called a float. When we take threads and don't interlock them as we do in plain weave, when we interlock them in plain weave, we get the flat kind. But when we don't interlock them, we get a float. And you can see this thread right here has floated over several of the blue threads. This is the end of it, and you can see there that I kind of locked down those floating threads. And that um, tie down there is, is kind of an intricate feature that I can do on my eight shaft loom. And it kind of helps to keep the float from getting caught in uh, the tines of your forks and other things that you might be scrubbing as you use this as a as a dishcloth or as a washcloth. But uh, this waffle weave, once it's taken off of the loom and I've cut it across and then hemmed it, will look something like this. Now you can see this is the back side. I'll put the front side up here. You can see the tie downs there and all of the different structure and. It does have a lot of ridges. You can feel the ridges, and it's extremely thick. You can really see the ridges on this side. Um, you can see the, the floating threads and the indentions. Um, and you can also see that it'll curl. This happens when you wash it. it the fabric is going to curl. Um, and that's why it's only used for dishcloths. And in fact, I could use it for tea towels, but I, I prefer a flatter, nicer tea towel. This one uh, I do in, in washcloths only. And you can see the other side has a lot of floating threads on it. And it turns out to be a really thick, really nice little washcloth. And it's a very, very
very attractive. This is a commercially made washcloth, and uh, you can see that it's a different weave structure. Commercially made washcloths will not come in this. I've never seen one in, in waffle weave. Um, and this is just a loop. You'll see these in a lot of tea towels and, and um, even your hand towels and your bath towels will have these little loops in them. And this can be done on a hand loom, but it, it is very time consuming. And of course, this is done on a machine. Uh, the other thing that you'll see on this tea towel is it's got a long vertical th uh, thread in there that's blue that gives it some color. Uh, I've had this washcloth for a long time, so you can see that it's kind of dingy looking, but that's what happens to washcloths. Uh, you can also see that um, there is no horizontal structure to it at all, and that's that's very typical of commercially made washcloths, is that they, they only have features that go vertically down the side. So you can see the difference between the uh, handmade and the commercially uh, done uh, washcloths. And then, of course, handmaids can be done in any size you want to. This one's larger, this one's smaller. Um, and that's what I wanted to talk to you tonight about um, on the waffle weave. And you can see that this weave structure is very interesting. I kind of like to do it but I only make dishcloths in it. If you'd like to see any of the other weave structures that we have to offer or see what a hand weaver can do, it's really pretty amazing. Just take a look at Etsy and visit my shop if you'd like. It's R&R &R Woven Treasures. That's all I have. Have a good day from Bixby, Oklahoma, and my house to yours.